Hello everyone, so today we're going to learn about how to use Steam VR controller input in just a couple of minutes. So I'm sure some of you guys have had a lot of trouble uh, utilizing Steam VR's built-in functions just for getting uh, touchpad input, grip button, haptic feedback, things like that. So I just wanted to make a quick video to show you guys how easy it is to actually get all of these things done. So the first thing we need to know is when we look at our controller left and our controller right, uh, Steam VR basically breaks things down into track controllers, tracked objects, and controllers themselves. So basically, the fastest way to get input is actually to add a component called a track controller onto your controller left or controller right, whichever one you want. And I've already pre-written the script just to show you guys, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at it in Visual Studio. And as we can see, so this is easy controller, right? So all we're doing is we're mapping our device to the component we just added, which is a track controller. And then we can actually call methods such as trigger clicked, which is an event handler, uh, and add our own method onto that. So what that means is that when this trigger clicked event gets, uh, gets called, which is going to be when the user actually clicks the trigger, we add on this method trigger, which we define over here, to actually run when that happens. And so if you need a more visual representation, if we click, if we look at this, we can see that uh, this clicked event handler uh, it should take two parameters. Right, we have this object here and this clicked event args. Don't worry too much about these, you can kind of just fill these in. But basically, um, this will work for just about every type of basic input. Um, the only thing, however, that it doesn't do is if you want to get specific locations on the touchpad, if you're trying to uh, map out the axes of the touchpad, that's not going to work. Haptic feedback is also not going to work. So, let's say we did want to get uh, a touchpad representation or some haptic feedback. How would we do that? So once again, uh, we can just go to better controller now and let's take a look here. So this time, instead of using the tracked controller script which we added here, we're actually going to use a component called tracked object which SteamVR automatically includes on your controller left and controller right. So all we're doing is we're using this tracked object to get the integer representation of the device, in this case the controller, and use that in order to get an easy way to actually call for a controller. Now once we've done that, because we're not using the SteamVR track controller, we have a higher level of abstraction which means that we can actually access things such as device.getAxis, um, device.triggerHapticPulse, and uh, SteamVRController.ButtonMask.Trigger. So what's all this mean? So if you want to get the exact position that the user is using on the touchpad, you can use getAxis.x and getAxis.y to get a, a mapping and coordinate space of the position of the user's thumb or whatever finger they're using. By the same token, we can actually also, so even though here we could, we could just say device.trigger clicked, if we try and do that here, it won't actually let us do that because once again our device is not of type SteamVR track controller, but it's of type SteamVR uh, controller, which is I know it's a it's a very small difference, but that's the that's the only difference that makes an implementation is that we now have to write out this longer script in order this longer if function in order to get the actual trigger input. But the advantage of this is that you can actually also use hap you can actually also trigger haptic feedback, which is as simple as just calling trigger haptic pulse and entering in uh, an integer into that. So, and obviously the integer is going to be the duration of the pulse, as you can see here. Uh, so that's 700 would be uh, about 700 milliseconds. Um, so you can set that to just about anything you want. Um, and the last thing I want to cover before I let you guys go is another form of input. So one last thing that we can do, you probably will never use this, um, but if you really want to get into it, you can actually use uh, these EVR button IDs. So here, right, we use these things called button masks. Here, we use these clicked event handlers. And the final level of abstraction is EVR button ID. So this, you're actually getting a call that you're actually calling directly into the trigger. Right? We're taking the trigger and we're mapping it to a variable here. And we're using a method called get press down. So here, we can actually use things such as uh, get press, get press down, get press up. So get press down uh, just means that while it's being held, get press uh, the first time it goes in, and get press up when the user lets go. Um, so these are all the different types of input that you have for uh, SteamVR and your Vive development. 
Uh, if you guys think of anything else or have any other issues, uh, definitely let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to respond with an easy way to get those uh, in your project. Thank you.